Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to part seven of our WordPress plugin building series. Uh, in this video, I kind of promised you in the last one that we'd be talking about short codes and particularly how to add short codes to the WordPress boilerplate plugin, which is what we are working with. And, uh, and then in this video, it's gonna kind of be broken into a two part type deal. And the first one we're gonna focus on just getting it into the boilerplate software or the plugin. And then in the next section, we're actually gonna focus on outputting some data that we have saved through our options administrative area into the, wherever we ask it to go uh, in our short code. And this is useful for a multitude of reasons. Like for example, if you had multiple options and you had, uh, let's say that it was a, a YouTube API video import, which is probably what I will be showing uh, as an example in the upcoming videos. Well, the code itself for the API call doesn't change. It's all the same except for maybe like a channel ID and a YouTube uh, API key for your videos. All right, cool. Well, the thing about that is we need to be able to call that and echo it out when the user loads the page. So say a lot of the code is just like boilerplate code, but it only has a few spots that need those API keys, the user could enter those API keys right here in their settings, and then our plugin would know in the short code to echo it out and then grab these settings and show it, right? Okay, that's one example. There's tons and tons and tons of examples of different ways you could use your save settings. I mean, it's really endless, it's up to you. But we're gonna start today by just getting going on putting in the options into the physical plugin and doing a simple hello world type short code to show you how it works. All right, so what we're actually gonna do is I minimized everything and closed everything just so you could see what happens here. We go to the includes and we go to the pl class plugin name. I think it's the loaders where we're gonna start. And yeah, this is where we wanna start. And so down here, you're gonna go to the construct method of the class plugin name loader that's in your includes. And you're gonna drop a new line and you're gonna copy the kind of what it's doing above, but you're gonna say short codes equals array and we're going to create an array for short codes inside of our loader and now what we need to do is we want to create an actual function to call to on the public side uh, for our short code to call to so let's go do that by going to the public folder right here in class public name uh, pu uh, public and then down below yoink right here let's just say our first hello world short code all right, public function, public hello world. Okay, let's actually um, separate the words so that we know what this is. All right, and then let's go for another, just say hello. And this is what it's gonna do. So let's give it an echo and let's give it some tags and say, hello world. All right, so we've now created a public function in our public facing side, which we're gonna to use to call to from our short code. All right, so now what we need to do is go set up uh, the actual array for our short code to be able to call to this and be able to register it with WordPress. All right, so what we're gonna do is back in our class plugin name loader from the includes down at the bottom of this, we have a run function. This registers the filters and actions with WordPress and we're gonna do this, filter run register the filters, short codes and actions with WordPress. And we're gonna add a exactly same loop as these others, I just have it saved. And it looks just like this. It's very similar to the others. And it's just a short codes as a hook. Add the short code, the hook, the array, and the hook callback. So now that we have that, we're going to take this code block here, which I will include this probably in the description for you guys, this particular code block, because uh, I was actually able to uh, write the, or be able to copy this. This actually came from a uh, wiki um, that's uh, official documentation for the WordPress boilerplate that shows this code. Uh, so I didn't have to write it myself about uh, a new section for adding short codes to the collection and registering them with WordPress. And like I said, don't worry about particularly writing this. I'm going to include it into our, um, into the uh, description so that you can copy and paste this at the same spot in the loader at the bottom. But essentially it's just uh, accepting a couple of parameters and doing function add short code, which is a, a WordPress function that allows us to add a short code into WordPress. And it takes the array that we've created and uh, uses it as it's, uh, as how it's going to add the short code. 
So uh, let's now get to the next part, which is back to the plugin name right here in the includes. This is where we have been doing all of our includes uh, for the administrative side, where we added our uh, admin in it for our general settings. We did the admin menu and all that stuff. Well, we need to go down to the public hooks and we're gonna add the following line and I'll break it down for you. Also from the documentation, this is exactly the same. I just don't wanna to have to write it by hand because that would slow us down. So, I'll pr probably include this in the description as well. All right, so this loader, same. Instead of add action, we're doing add shortcode. Remember, we just added that uh, function to our uh, loader class down here. It's a public function we added, add shortcode, and then it calls in, uh, and then it uses the um, built some built-in WordPress stuff to add the shortcode to the collection. So that's what it's calling to. And uh, that's what we're looking for right here. And then inside of our public, which is where this is facing, because it's calling the public plugin. So it's calling that class from the public class right here, which can access this class's features or functions. And it's going to access the public hello world function right here and the short code name. And let's call this WP10 short code one. Okay, let's head back over to our front end. Now that everything has been changed and saved, let's do a refresh. All right, sorry about that guys. I left uh, some code in the wrong spot. Uh, when I first started writing uh, the um, array stuff in, I accidentally put the array code in the wrong spot and then I forgot to delete it out. So WordPress threw an error on that. No problem, so I refreshed the page and uh, there it is. So now the short code has been registered. It's, it didn't throw any errors on our code, which means that it accepted our short code. And so how do you do a short code in WordPress? Well, just like this. This is our short code right here, right? Well, you, as you know, when you output short, co uh, short codes in WordPress, uh, you just go to the front end. And this is the site, we're, another site we've been working on from another tutorial. And turn on our builder. This is our Themeify builder. But if you're in regular WordPress, it's just anywhere where you can put in HTML. And let's create a new section, single wide. Let's grab the text field. And see, it's not going to output anything because we have to put it in square brackets. So see, it detects that it is a short code. Let's close. And we should have hello world. So we have officially created a short code inside of our WordPress site that is registered and it is calling to our public class which is going down in here and we have all of our shortcode calls here and it's outputting whatever is in the shortcode. In this case we did a PHP echo of hello world. So let me do a very fast reverse rundown on what we did. Back in the loader, we started in the loader and we scrolled down into the construct method. The loader was found from includes uh, class plugin name loader construct and we added this short codes is an array we've created a short codes array to the class plugin name loader and then we came down and we added a new run a new for each loop to the run which registers all of the short codes we have it, it stores them as hook from our short codes and then registers each one by running the function add short code for each short code that we have created run it as hook and run each hook into the add short code function which was added here in the same file and it is taking anything that we are um, our parameters that we gave it from our um, short code call and then registers those short codes with WordPress okay Back here in the plugin name, we had to define our public hooks. This is where we hook into things. And we said, we want to have a short code named WP short code one. We want it to call to the public class. That because as you notice, the public plug our public plugin is defining a new plugin name public. It is receiving this from this file here, or it's getting that from this class name, object oriented. It's calling in and initializing a new instance of this so that we can call this function from within it. And it's storing it in the public 
uh, plugin public variable. So we're calling to that variable, which calls to that file or to that class, and then it wants that function. So when the user does this short code call, we want to go to the public, to the uh, class plugin public, and access that class, and we want to output this function, which in the end gives us hello world. Okay. I hope that I made that easy enough to follow. I'm sorry if it was difficult to follow. I really tried to break it down so that you could understand it uh, and as simply as possible. It was just the loader that loaded it in, that did all the stuff, um, added in all of our basic necessity needed to register it into WordPress. Then the short code here calls to the public facing front end class, which has all of our public facing code in it, and it hooked it into a short code. It didn't hook it into a regular script or header, it hooked a short code. Okay, and it created a shortcode. Now, in WordPress, all shortcodes have to have um, square brackets around them. Okay, so it won't output if you just put this into your site. You actually have to put it like this. Dang it. Just like that right there. This is your shortcode. Okay, and that's how you output it. So we can register as many shortcodes as we want. And also we could do these um, programmatically as well. We could, we could, for instance, in the front end or in the back end here in our settings, we could have said add unlimited shortcodes and give the user ability to add shortcodes too. We could do all that. Uh, I'm just showing you an example breakdown of how to get it going into your uh, plugin. And that way you can kind of get a feel for, okay, here's how shortcodes are added and here's how they work. It's really not that difficult um, when you're backboning on something that's already been built because uh, you don't have to do it all from scratch. Anyway, that's gonna wrap us up for part seven uh, of this tutorial, lucky number seven. And in the next part, we're gonna actually use our short code to uh, actually add some parameters to it. And we're gonna send our general settings savings and we're gonna output some code on the front end that contains our general settings. And um, I'm not really doing a lot of error checking or like uh, escaping to make sure that the database <laughs> doesn't get messed with by rogue code and all that. I'll probably end up doing that in the future to show that too, like best practices for escaping variables and stuff like that. But um, that's gonna wrap us up. Like, subscribe and comment. I really appreciate it. And get to adding those short codes guys and I'll see you in part eight.